Hi guys, I'm Jay Butler and we're in Liverpool, UK in my tattoo studio, Bloodlines Gallery. Today we are doing a portrait tattoo tutorial. I'm going to be tattooing a portrait of Ragnar from the TV series Vikings. So now we're going to make the stencil. I personally like to still do it by hand, like the old school way of making stencils, using just obviously the stencil paper and then with the printout over the top of it. I have got an iPad to obviously make the stencil, but I just prefer it this way personally, just because of the fact that I've done it for so long and I just feel comfortable doing it. Also as well, it's sort of like doing the design um, and studying it a little bit better before actually coming to do the piece. So I'll just go over the top of these little markings and just try to pick out as much detail as possible. So what I'm doing here is just literally picking out all the darkest elements in the beard just for that texture and then that way it keeps the stencil a little bit more simplified and then I can just sort of work away from them darker parts then. So I'm just going to apply the stencil now, so I'll just mark up the centre of where it's going to be placed in the back of the calf today, just because it's the first piece that we're going to be doing on a one three stencil. So I've got the stencil made, all lined up, put a couple of little stress marks in the paper, just with the paper being quite thick that I use for the stencil. Yeah. You've got to put a couple of little stress marks in just to help it bend a little bit better, especially around a curved area like this. It's not perfectly flat. So we've done that and then I'll just give it a little bend the paper just to make it a little bit more pliable and then it'll make it easier to put on then. Um, stencil solution that I use personally, I like to use Dermalize. So just put a tiny bit on and just put an even thin layer over the top um, the area where you're working. So I'll always put more on than I need, just so you know no matter where you place the tattoo, the stencil even, it's going to take to the skin. So I'm using a FK Ions Flux a stroke length, I think 3.5. So it's quite a punchy machine, but I prefer to use this machine for shading and lining. But I feel as though for my style of work, it suits me best for shading as well, just because I like to sort of tickle the ink in. So I just find that any sort of lower stroke length machine, it just doesn't sort of pack enough punch um, for my style of work. Voltage wise, Depends on obviously what you're tattooing, um, whether it's like jet jet black, stuff like that. We'll obviously just determine what voltage you use, but I do like to use for normal day-to-day -day shading. I'll use between either 7 or 7.5 volts. So this now I'm going to use 7.5 just because I'm going to be doing the jet black. So it'll just get it in that little bit crisper. I'm going to start the tattoo now using I two, use two different makes of needles, cartridge. I use Cheyenne and I use Quadrant. So I use Cheyenne for me liners just because I feel as though the liners are a little bit sharper than the Quadrant. And I use Quadrant for anything else, from curve mags, round shaders. So I'm gonna start with a three round shader now just to pretty much pick out all little bits of detail in the beard, the texture and then yeah just working way up then to the, using the wider mags so i like to use 
use a round shader rather than a liner for parts of tattoos like this rather than using a liner as I say just because of the fact that it's I think personally it causes less trauma using a round shader than a liner for really intricate things like this yet there will be parts that I will use a liner for but for stuff like this where you are using like a bit of shading and a slightly wider area a little larger area than you'd need for the liner um, I just feel as though it's a lot better than using a liner as I say using a round shader So this is Dynamic I use to tattoo. So Dynamic Black, I like to use the Triple Black for the Jet Black parts like I'm using now. And then for the rest of me ink setup, I'll use the normal Dynamic Black and I will cut it down myself using the sort of like distilled water mixing solution. So I'll have a full cap of triple black, then I'll have a cap of normal black, which will be three quarters filled, and then 12 drops, six drops, three drops from your lighter shade, and then I'll put one drop in of the normal black with the mixing solution, and that's for more just at the end where you're coming back just to saturate the skin. So I'll always start using the darker shades first, and then map the area in and then once I've done that you can blend away then from that darkest point with the lighter tones. Now in this area I've put down the solid black parts that I'll be working from, from the beard. Using the triple black by Dynamic I'll start now putting the slightly lighter tones in just to try and blend away from them parts um, using the normal black which I've cut down into the sort of like configurations that I mentioned earlier. So you just sort of work from dark to light and then at the very very end I'll come back and then just saturate bits that might need it that just aren't quite skin tone I'll just put that one drop of black ink that I cut down I'll use that for the saturation then So obviously with the image being cut off, especially the top of the head and the beard, you can't obviously finish the piece with like a perfect straight line like that. So what we're doing is because it's eventually going to be like a full lower leg, we're going to have other elements sort of coming from the bottom, tying up into it. So we can sort of just fade out part of the beard, sort of the hip, top of the head, and then the other elements then are sort of cut across that then and then it'll sort of sit behind that image then.
So now I've just put down some of the finer details using the three round. I've just swapped over to a seven curve mag now. So I like to use curve mags rather than normal mags just because of the fact that I think that you get a smoother finish on them, especially with doing realism. So I'm just using that now just to put a little bit of shading in the lips. Uh, coming away from them smaller little bit of shading that I put in before, like the cracks of the lips and that. So all I'll do is I'll just pretty much just push the ink away. So it's creating a lighter tone as it comes away. Even though it's the same shade that I'm using, you can create a few different tones using that one shade just by how much sort of pressure you're putting in it. So as you're coming away from the skin, you're flipping away and then just creating a little bit of a lighter tone, but, but it's not quite a lighter shade, if that makes sense. This would be classed as my sort of dark, not my extra dark tone. So it's like 12 drops of black cut down with the mixing solution. So I'll put, like I say, I'll put the darker parts in and then I'll start putting the lighter bits in, coming away from that then, working dark to light. I think some artists prefer to put lighter tones down first and then build up a bit like a painting. But personally, I like to use darker tones first, even though there's, say, less room for error. I prefer that because it's just, it's less trauma to the skin because you're not having to go back and back and back over the skin. So for this part now that I'm bringing over bits of the sides of the beard into the cheeks, just to create these like little strands of hair, you just I'm still using the seven K of mag, but I'm just turning the needle on its side and just using the very edge of the needle just to create these very fine lines rather than swapping between a line needle and then going swapping back to the shading needle and then to do then the darker sort of wider areas I'll turn the needle back on its flat side to get cover more surface area So I'm just coming back doing the beard now again. So now I've got elements around this part of the tattoo done. I've come back to do bits of the beard so the stencil doesn't wash off with the palm of my hand. So I've swapped back to the three round shade and I'll just to do a little bit more intricate bit of detail on the beard before swapping back over to the mag again.
doing realism, well, most tattoos, but especially realism, you can, you're only as good as, you can only do as good a tattoo as the stencil or the image that's in front of you. So, the higher resolution the image, um, the better. And one that has got a higher contrast to it is going to be better as well, so it's got a good bit of black in it. So the fact that it's going to stand the test of time then, and it's going to hold, rather than it all being quite light greys and going sort of wishy-washy once it's healed. So yeah, I'd probably say that's the, one of the most important things for doing realism is having a good quality like reference image to work from. I've swapped over now from one of the seven mags that I was using before to do the shading. So I'm just going to now use a three round and then a line needle, just to, like a three liner, just to create these little cracks which are underneath his eyes. So I'm just using a three round shader now just to do these little cracks which are underneath the eye. And then I'll be swapping over to use a three liner as well to do the even more intricate part of the little eyelashes which are just underneath the white part of the eye around here. Right now I'm using the dynamic triple black and then just to, like I say to get these little cracks in which are underneath the eye and then I'll be swapping back then between shades of different tones of black that I've pre-mixed just to create other lighter tones which are around the eye just to create them folds and a texture in the skin. So yeah, so um, I'll prefer to use quadrant for the sh like curve mags and round shaders just because of the fact that I just prefer them over Cheyenne but I like to use Cheyenne for the liners just because I feel that they're a little bit sharper uh, on the three liners uh, you can get a little bit more precise so you can get like a tight liner uh, configuration uh, in Cheyenne for them
yeah, so as far as like doing colour packing or anything like that, I personally don't really colour pack anything. The only thing that I will colour pack is the jet black areas, like here for instance, like round by the eyebrows or the underneath the nostrils. Um, but when I say colour pack, I don't really then use it for anything else of the like the grey tones that I've mixed. Just I prefer to sort of tickle the colour in and then even if it's on a larger area, just sort of back and forth, back and forth and just building up the tone rather than really working it into the skin. Um, it just works for me and that's how I've always done it. Rather than trying to like maybe risking overworking the skin with a diluted shade basically of black. Yeah, so I use Dynamic Black over any other like brand just because I've tried it and I just find for my style of work it seems to go in the best into the skin but there's no sort of right or wrong ink to be using. If it's black, it's black and you can still dilute it and cut it down to the same ratios that I do but I just find the heel is slightly better using Dynamic personally, uh, that's why I like to use it. Yeah, I don't do anything, I'd say, against the norm as far as tattooing, because uh, I don't really know what the norm is, if I'm completely honest with you, because I think everyone's got their own way of tattooing, their own style, their own techniques. Um, as long as it's clean and the, t the outcome is how you want it. Um, yeah, so I don't think I've got like a specific thing that I do that nobody else does or nobody else does who does realism does I think it's just more of what feels right for you and what you're comfortable doing and how you get the sort of desired outcome of your work
So with obviously this machine, it's got a 3.5 uh, stroke length on it, which I prefer just for my style of work, just because the way I work, it's, it suits me because I can just basically tickle the, machine, um, the shades in rather than having to use like a shorter stroke length for like a typical shading machine. And then I find that doing my style and I have to sort of work the ink in a little bit more. Um, so I like to have a little bit more of a punch to the machine. And then also I can line with it as well. Uh, the machine's just got its standard grip on it that it comes with, but I like to use grip wrap over the top of it just to make the grip that little bit wider and obviously a little bit more soft to hold over a longer tattoo uh, session. And the fact that I put the grip tape on it, one, because it's sterile, but as well because of the fact that it reduces your chances of getting carpal tunnel because the grip's wider, your hand is there more relaxed. And personally, I think you can create softer shades when your hand's relaxed rather than being so tight on the machine. So to create the lighter tones uh, on a portrait, I like to sometimes maybe run the machine a little bit lower voltage, maybe going from 7.5 to 7 volts. And then, yeah, just taking your time as far as pressure, stuff like that, just to really take your time tickling the ink in and just building up the tones a little bit slower, just because of the fact that if you go in too harsh then you're gonna have a bit of a separation between tones personally Yeah, so I've just changed the voltage from 7.5 volts to 9, just to do the white with the liner, just really get it in there, first go. So, putting the white in now, uh, I'm just using Dynamic White Ink as well, just so it's the same brand, I just find. It's not that it's any better than using other brands, just to find I've just bought them all together when I got the blacks. So I'm using a three liner at the moment to put this in. So I'll use a number of dots, lines, uh, to create the white highlights throughout the beards and on the rest of the face. Sometimes I won't just use a liner, I'll use maybe a mag or a round shader depending on how much white is in the image or like if it's on a wider area. the tattoo now getting a last couple of pictures and videos of it and then I'm just gonna get the client wrapped up and let him go home so I'm just wrapping up the client now using the Dermalize second skin I'll then hand me client just a sachet of hustle butter which I use for the aftercare 
Now I've got the second skin on, I'm going to hand my client the aftercare, the sachets of the hustle butter, and he's now going to then follow the aftercare that I give to him on an aftercare sheet, and he's going to leave the dermalizer on now for four days. So, finished the tattoo for today. Took about seven and a half hours. I am absolutely shattered. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.